Okay, in this video we're going to talk about something called the multiplication rule. Now, as we've seen before, if we want to calculate the probability of two events happening together, say flipping a coin two times and finding out what's the probability of the coin coming up heads both times, well, we can just calculate the probability of the first event, flipping the coin the first time, and calculate the probability of the second event, which is flipping the coin the second time, and we can just multiply those two probabilities together to find out, well, what's the probability of getting heads the first flip and also getting heads the second flip. So we might be tempted to say, well, then the formula, the rule then, if I want to calculate the probability of two events happening together, that rule, the probability of event A and event B happening, well, you just take the probability of the first event and multiply it times the probability of the second event, and there's our rule. Except, it turns out that very often, the probability of the second event, that is, how likely it is that the second event is going to happen, depends on what happens in the first event. And so, the way we take care of that in this formula is that we don't actually just write, you know, the probability of these two events happening is the probability of event A times the probability of event B. We write it like this. We say the probability of event A and event B happening is the probability of event A happening times the probability of event B given that event A has already happened. And this notation that you see right here, the B and then the vertical line and then A, that just means the probability of event B given that, that little vertical line means given that, the probability of event B given that event A has already happened. So let's take a look at how we might use this formula in this example here. It says a bag contains four blue marbles, six green marbles, and three yellow marbles. If two marbles are drawn at random from the bag, what's the probability of first drawing a green marble and then drawing a yellow marble? Okay, so we've seen examples like this before with the marbles in a bag. And now we're going to take a look at the way that we will go about calculating this probability of drawing two marbles from a bag. And we're going to do it in two different ways because it turns out there's two different possible answers we could get to this. We're going to talk about doing this marble drawing with replacement and then without replacement. So I want to draw these two marbles from the back. So I've got my two events. My first event is drawing the green marble, and my second event is drawing the yellow marble. And if I want to calculate the probability of drawing a green marble and then drawing a yellow marble, then I just need to. And if I'm going to do it with what I'm going to do it with what's called with replacement. That is, after I draw the first marble, I'm going to put it back in the bag before I draw my second marble. All right. So my second event then before I you know before I do my second event. I'm going to put that first marble back. All right, so I should be able to write down the probability of drawing a green marble and then drawing a yellow marble. Well, that's just multiplying these two probabilities. So the probability of drawing a green marble times the probability of drawing a yellow marble given that I drew a green marble first. So if I can calculate these two probabilities, then I'm just going to multiply them together, and that will tell me the probability of drawing a green and a yellow marble. Okay. Well, what's the probability of drawing a green marble? Well, let's see. I've got 13 marbles in the bag. How many of them are green? Six. So there's the probability of drawing my green marble. What's the probability of drawing a yellow marble given that I've already drawn a green marble from the bag? Well, since I'm doing this marble drawing experiment with replacement, that is, I draw my first marble, I look at it, and then I put it back in the bag before I draw my second marble, it turns out that drawing the first marble doesn't have any effect at all on drawing the second marble. I draw this first marble, I put it back in the bag, now when I go to draw my second marble, I still have 13 marbles in the bag, and I want to know the probability of drawing a yellow marble. Well, let's see, three of those marbles are yellow, so this second probability, I could just as well have written, you know, what's the probability of just drawing a yellow marble? Because the probability of drawing a yellow marble, given that I've already drawn a green marble, that doesn't change anything about my probability. So here's my first probability. Here's my second probability. I multiply those together, and I get, let's see, 18 over 169. And if I punch that in and get a decimal, I'm going to get 
0.107. Okay, well, so that's the probability of drawing a green marble and a yellow marble if I do it with replacement. Let's take a look at what happens if I do it without replacement. I'm still doing this same, I'm still going to use this same formula. In other words, the probability of drawing a green marble and drawing a yellow marble is the probability of drawing a green marble times the probability of drawing a yellow marble given that I've already drawn a green marble. Except now I'm going to do this experiment without replacement. That is, I'm not going to put the first marble back. I'm going to draw the first marble and I'm not going to put it back before I draw the second marble. So let's see how that's going to affect my probabilities here. So my first event, drawing a green marble, I want to know what's the probability. Well, how many marbles do I have in the bag? I've got 13 marbles in the bag. How many of them are green? Six. So that first probability is exactly the same as it was over here. Now, when I go to draw my second marble this time, however, since I'm doing this without replacement, I've already drawn one marble from the bag and I'm not putting it back. So now all of a sudden things are different because I no longer have 13 marbles in the bag. I only have 12 marbles in the bag. So now I want to know what's the probability, when, and that's what I mean when I say the probability of drawing a yellow marble given that I've already drawn a green marble. I've got one less marble in the bag. Now how many of those 12 marbles, how many of them are yellow? Well, there are still three yellow marbles in the bag. So now this is the probability of drawing a yellow marble given that I've already drawn a green marble. Because I'm doing this without replacement, it changes this probability of my second event. Well, now I have these two probabilities. Now I can just multiply them together. And here I get 18 over 15 times 12 is 156. And if I punch this into my calculator to write it as a decimal, then that would be 0.115. So you see I get a different probability depending on whether I do my experiment without replacement or whether I do it with replacement. Notice, however, that my formula, the formula here for the probability of two events, it still works regardless of whether I'm doing it with replacement or without replacement. The only thing that changes is the probability of this second event. Now you've got another example there in your notes. I want you to try that one on your own, and we'll take a look at that answer in class.